Welcome to an introduction to number theory and the divisibility relation. What mathematical discoveries can we make about the natural numbers themselves? This is the main question of number theory, a huge, ancient, complex, and above all, beautiful branch of mathematics. Historically, number theory was known as the queen of mathematics and was very much a branch of pure mathematics studied for its own sake instead of as a means to understanding real-world applications. This has changed in recent years as applications of number theory have been discovered. Probably the most well-known example of this is RSA cryptography, one of the methods used to encrypt data on the internet. It is number theory that makes this possible. We will begin our study of number theory by looking at divisibility, a topic you were first exposed to many years ago. If given integers a and b, it is possible that a divided by b gives an integer. In this case, we say that b divides a in symbols, we write b vertical bar a. Notice if b divides a, then the quotient of a divided by b results in an integer. If this holds true, then we can say that b is a divisor or factor of a, and a is a multiple of b. In other words, if b divides a, then a is equal to b times k for some integer k. All of this is summarized in what's called the divisibility relation which states, given integers m and n, we say m divides n, and write m vertical bar n, provided n divided by m is an integer. Thus the following assertions mean the same thing. m divides n, n equals m times k for some integer k, m is a factor or divisor of n, and n is a multiple of m. Let's look at a concrete example. We know that 15 divided by three is equal to the integer five, and therefore it follows that three divides 15. 15 is equal to three times five, which for number two indicates k is equal to five. We can also say three is a factor or divisor of 15, as well as 15 as a multiple of three. And now let's look at some additional examples. We're asked to decide whether each statement below is true or false. Notice all the statements in the form of m divides n. If m divides n is true, then n divided by m results in an integer. If n divided by m does not result in an integer, then m divides n is false. For number one, we have four divides 20. We need to check to see if 20 divided by four results in an integer. And 20 divided by four is equal to five, which is an integer, and therefore the statement is true. We also have 20 equals four times five, and that four is a factor of 20, as well as 20 is a multiple of four, all of which show the statement is true. Number two, we have 20 divides four. We need to check to see if 20 divided by four results in an integer. Well, four divided by 20 is equal to four twentieths, which is equal to one fifth, which is not an integer, and therefore the statement is false. We can also state that 20 is not a factor of four, and four is not a multiple of 20, all of which show the statement is false. Number three, we have zero divides five. We need to check to see if five divided by zero results in an integer. Well, if five divided by zero is undefined because division by zero is always undefined, and therefore the statement is false. Number four, we have five divides zero. We need to check to see if zero divided by five results in an integer. Well, zero divided by five is equal to zero, which is an integer, and therefore the statement is true. In fact, for all non-zero integers x, x divides zero is true. Number five, we have seven divides seven. We need to check to see if seven divided by seven results in an integer. Seven divided by seven, of course, is equal to one, which is an integer, and therefore the statement is true. In fact, for all non-zero integers x, x divides x is true. Number six, we have one divides 37. We need to check to see if 37 divided by one results in an integer. 37 divided by one is equal to 37, which is an integer, and therefore the statement is true. In fact, for all integers x, one divides x is true. Number seven, we have negative three divides 12. We need to check to see if 12 divided by negative three results in an integer. And 12 divided by negative three equals negative four, which is an integer, the statement is true. Number eight, we have eight divides 12. We need to check to see if 12 divided by eight results in an integer. Well, 12 divided by eight is equal to 12 eighths, which is equal to three halves or 1.5, which is not an integer. The statement is false. 
We can also say the statement is false because eight is not a factor of 12 and 12 is not a multiple of eight. And for the last example, we have 1,642 divides 136,299. You need to check to see if 136,299 divided by 1,642 results in an integer. For this one, we could probably just use a calculator. The quotient is approximately 83.008, which is not an integer, and therefore the statement is false. We'll go ahead and stop here for this lesson. In the next lesson, we'll be talking about the division algorithm as well as remainder classes. I hope you found this helpful.